Hello, this is Daryl Castle with today's podcast. Today is Monday, September 22nd, 2014. And on today's podcast, we're going to discuss the relationship between President Obama and the generals who command his military efforts, the doubts that have arisen regarding President Obama's strategy for dealing with the Islamic State and his widening rift with the generals and the U.S. military as a whole, President Obama's relationship with the officer corps has always been strained, to say the least. But what has been happening recently is unprecedented, as we will see. This has happened before, just not to this extent. President Lincoln sacked generals, not for political reasons, but because they were incompetent on the battlefield. The most famous case between president and generals was probably President Truman relieving Douglas MacArthur as commander in Korea, but never, as far as I know, has the officer corps as a whole criticized a strategy devised by their commander-in-chief to this extent. This is true whether they are retired or active duty. The New York Times reports that retired Marine General James Mattis who served under Obama until last year and who commanded Marines in combat for 41 years until retiring recently, testified the other day before the House Intelligence Committee and said that the president's strategy was, quote, tying the military's hands. He went on to say, quote, half-hearted or tentative efforts or airstrikes alone can backfire on us and actually strengthen our foe's credibility. We may not wish to reassure our enemies in advance that they will not see American boots on the ground, end quote. That's something I've commented on many times, the president's habit of telling his enemies in advance what are the limits that they will face. Just before General Mattis' testimony, General Martin Dempsey, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, publicly suggested that the commander-in-chief's policy could be reconsidered. That is an unprecedented move for a joint chief's chairman to criticize the commander-in-chief in public. General Dempsey said he didn't want to rule out the possibility of American troops. He mentioned that General Lloyd Austin, the commander for the Middle East, had already requested them for one battle but had been overruled. The White House quickly corrected General Dempsey and reiterated there will be no boots on the ground. At the same time, the White House insisted there is no dissent in the ranks. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel told the House Armed Services Committee that civilian and military leaders are, quote, in full alignment and in complete agreement with every component of the president's strategy, end quote, well, Who are you going to believe, me or your lying eyes? Committee members suggested that the president listen more closely to his commanders and that he not take options off the table. General Mattis also reminded the committee members that although the Islamic State has our attention, Islamic terrorism is a global threat around the world. Disagreements with commanders and serving officers is nothing new for the president. He once relieved the commanding admiral of a carrier battle group at sea in a combat zone. That's never been done before. Also, the commanding general of all troops in Africa, as well as the commander of a strategic nuclear missile base, along with 100 other officers. The generals insist that the president's political promises are restricting their ability to fight. The Wall Street Journal In this past weekend's edition, reported that the Army's highest-ranking officer, General Ray Oderno, the Army Chief of Staff, said last Friday that he had, quote, grave concern about the size of the military. Threats are increasing. They are not decreasing. And we have to make sure we are making the right decisions, he said, end quote. The Defense Department has been ordered to shrink the Army to its smallest size since World War II. That's what General Oderno was referring to. The active duty army stands at 510,000, but is due to shrink to 490 by the end of next year, 450,000 by the end of 2017, and 420,000 
by the end of this decade, so the Army is increasingly being asked to do more and more with less and less. This usually means more casualties, more stress, more suicides, possibly more lost wars. That's just my view, though. General Oderno says we need to have this debate. We need to debate, he says. Enough is enough. He insists the plan cuts are untenable in light of today's threats. So, once again, the Army Chief of Staff publicly criticizes the President's plans and orders. Rear Admiral John Kirby, the Pentagon Press Secretary, said the Pentagon is now planning a review of the decisions to reduce the Army. Retired generals are also speaking out. Retired General James Conway, former Commandant of the Marine Corps, said the President's strategy doesn't have a snowball's chance in hell of succeeding. General Conway, Major General Robert Dees, and Lieutenant General William Boykin, all retired, will be speaking at the Voters' Value Summit on Saturday, September 27th. That's kind of unusual by itself, generals coming out to speak to a Values Voter Summit. The generals aren't the only ones who have not bought in to the president's strategy so far. His coalition to fight the Islamic State consists of a few French jets and a whole lot of promises. What makes countries like Romania send 800 troops to Afghanistan and Iraq, Poland 2,500, Australia several thousand countries that have no real stake in that fight. Well, they understand the historic relationship between them and the United States. They understand that the United States stands for freedom and that it has their backs. And they know that despite all the faults George W. Bush had and all the criticism he deserves, he was not afraid to commit his own troops. They saw his commitment, even The Mideast countries are shying away. They don't like and they don't trust the president and they don't see his commitment to this fight. Finally, folks, I know the president is commander in chief and that civilian control of the military is bedrock in America. This rift between the military and civilian authorities cannot be good for military morale, and that's for sure. This all makes the president look weak before our enemies, a bad thing. Just clearly state the mission the objective, and let the military tell you what it will take to carry it out. If you don't like that, then you need a new mission. At least that's the way I see it. Till next time, this is Daryl Castle, folks. Thanks for listening.